Welcome to the lounge everyone. My name is Sober Adele and today I want to talk to you about well you will see when the time has come. As you know guys, I talk a lot. And I know many people out there are heavily nodding their heads right now. Especially you. Yeah, you. But in order to talk about so many different things, like me, I first have to think a lot, lot about them and do a little bit of research, not too much, a little bit of research and think about all those topics. And today I want to tell you a little bit about what I am thinking about right now. Like, not right now in the moment, but in general for the last few months or even years. Number one is a fear of mine. I never want to lose my curiosity. The curiosity to know new things and hear about different perspectives and get to know many, many different people and hear what they have to say, their stories and what they've been through. I enjoy the stories of different people, of many different people, because I always want to know more and understand more. And the great source for that are different people. Not other people, not random people, but different people. Different from what or who I am. People that surprise me with their answers. I thought they were going to answer in a certain way, but they don't. I also think a lot about my habit of being nostalgic. Like thinking about all those great experiences I had in the past. I try to not live in the past because I reckon that's a bad thing. And as time goes on, I'm really aware of the phenomenon that you tend to forget the bad things and the tough moments in the past, um, except they were really traumatic or um, like really severe. Like you won't forget those, but the, the, the worst moments, the not so good moments, you tend to forget over time and only the good stuff stays with you. And th this is kind of a danger with nostalgia. But there's one thing in particular I think a lot about, and that is time. My time, the time of others, and when it might end for us. And with time, you do not have many options. Time doesn't ask you, how would you like it today, Toby? A little bit faster? A little bit slower? It doesn't work this way. As much as I think about it, I can't come any closer to some form of a solution to this question. It's really hard. And since I have no answer to many questions related to this topic, I for the moment have to settle with a kind of an uncertainty that I just don't know for the moment. But where am I going with this video today? Why am I even telling you all of this stuff? I want to tell every one of you who has reached the point of thinking about these questions. And I think many of us do in the right moments that you're not alone with your thoughts, that many people think about that, that I think about it and that you probably think about those questions a lot and many different questions that are similarly hard. And again, I think a lot about those difficult questions as well. Like we are all in this uh, together. Some we're all in this together, you know, sorry. And don't lose your sense of humor over serious topics. That's an, another good message, I guess. I'm just sure that thinking and talking about such difficult questions together with family and friends or a random Toby on the YouTubes makes them way more bearable. At least way more bearable than saying carpe diem. Just live the day. Enjoy the day. Live every day like if it's your last. Yeah, great advice. It's, it's so good, it has the strength of a rotten tomato. If you, if you don't squeeze it that hard, it's really good, but if you, if you put a little bit of pressure on this, on this point, it uh, dissolves into a mushy mess. Useless. The only way to find comfort in questions that are really, really hard or you feel like you have no hope finding a solution for are other people. And sometimes, and, and people don't believe this until they experience it, 
sometimes this comes from people they've never thought this would happen with. Like people they thought they didn't like or they had nothing to talk about with, but it can come in the form of pretty much everyone if you're open enough. A way of seeing many different people in a whole new light. And I've heard the sentence a lot, someone, something like, why didn't we speak earlier? Why didn't we have such a great talk earlier? Why, why, why did we just uh, avoid each other in, in some way, shape or form? Like, like, like in school, when you, when you, when there's a few colleagues that you never really spoken with, like in five years and, and, and in, fi in final cl class, in grad class, you start talking to them and find out, well, they're not so bad after all. Can happen. And with your colleagues in, at work, kind of the same thing. And most of the time, when people are so like distancing themselves from other people, they don't want to talk with anyone and don't get answered, ask questions or anything. It's most of the time like awkwardness or, or fears or anxieties of some shape, way, shape or form. And once you break through that, you realize how nice people they are. And many people or most people I feel like have a really hard time expressing or articulating what their fears are and what they are concerned about. They don't want to talk about that just by themselves. So here's a trick. You can be the one, if you're uncomfortable with that, expressing yourself, be the one who's asking the questions. And after you get an answer, you can talk about where you agree, where you disagree, and blah, 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 you're in a discussion. But Toby, people won't just answer my random weird questions about their personal life. Yes, they will. You would be so, so, so surprised how willing people are to answering personal question. Doesn't, doesn't go for anyone, of, everyone, of course. Then nothing applies to everyone. But you would be surprised how many people would answer a really, really personal question from someone they wouldn't expect it from. Because many people are so desperate to express themselves or to have someone with genuine care. Of course, a random question won't get answered. So let's talk about what are good questions? What are good questions? First of all, there are questions with genuine care. Like, hey, I, I, heard, about, I heard from Andy that your aunt had an accident. Did you, did you have the time yet to visit her? How is she doing? Like putting some effort in the question. Some effort in the question that makes it believable and not like, hey, is everyone okay with everything okay with your aunt? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, great. See you. Bye. That's not genuine. That's not genuine. T t taking one's time with the question and yeah, I said it. Something more direct like, are you worried right now for what's going on in, in Brazil? Or any other country or any other topic. Insert any topic you want. But directly asking, what are your thoughts about this? Are you worried about something? Or something really simple, if you don't want to get like into the deep stuff right away. You could ask, how do you feel like with the prices rising and that a kebab is, did you see it? A kebab is over six euros right now. Can you believe it? Questions like these will always get a reaction of some shape or form. And if it's only a laugh, great. The last question, the simple one with kebab, made one thing really, really, makes one thing really, really clear. Ask for feelings, not for events. The most prominent example of this is, hey, how was it in Canada? Don't ask such a question, it's absolute stupid. And most people ask questions like these. They are completely uninventive, they are boring, and they will lead to an answer like this. Hey, how was your time in Canada? Good. So you know nothing. You learned nothing and no one learned anything from this situation. So ask something different. Ask not for the event of Canada. Ask for the feeling behind it. Ask something like, hey, you were in Canada, right? Did you make a new friend there that you will really, really miss? And this will lead to a compelling story about this incident and, and then the story continues and goes on and they will answer the question how it was in Canada. But just a different impact. And because it's so much about deep talk over here, if you know a person a little bit better, there are people that 
where it doesn't fit to ask such a question right in the beginning, but have you asked someone, hey, when your time is over, where do you think you will go? You can ask such a question. I always like to hear an answer to that question. Always fascinating answers that you will get. It all begins with someone who understands. Understands what is important and asks great questions because of that. And it starts with questions that uh, deliver a genuine care for the other person. Like, like in that video where I, where I talked about the good morning and the good night, it's the same thing with that. Don't just say hi or, or goodbye or good night or good morning. Just, just like, just to say something. Put meaning behind it. It's kind of, kind of a similar thing and, and I really like this concept. And be the one who understands that we all go through the same questions all over again and once in a while from time to time. So, my name is Sobro Adele. I hope you liked today's video and topic just as much as I did. And I will see you again next time here in my lounge.